Ever since the start of pandemic last year, demand for budget laptop has just increased by a huge margin. Everyone just needed a laptop either for work or for attending online classes or even watching movies or web series like me. Anyway, there are some really great ultrabooks under 60k like Asus Viewbook series, Lenovo IdeaPads, HP laptop, Acer Aspad series, and even that MSI Modern series. But none of them has a premium design with full metallic build, a 2K display, or even a Thunderbolt 4 port. Well, Xiaomi has kind of solved this issue. So I have this recently launched Mi Notebook Pro and in paper it does has an impressive specs for an ultrabook at least for its price. But specs apart, how does this laptop perform in real world usage? Is it just an average laptop or can it be a perfect budget premium slash portable laptop for students or professionals? Well, to know that, watch this video till the end and I also mention some of the other ultrabooks that might be worth to look under 60k. Anyway, this is Vignesh and let's start the review of this Mi Notebook Pro. So let's start with the build and design. Xiaomi has done a great job in terms of design and build quality. This laptop has a series 6 aluminum build all around which is the kind of a thing that you don't expect in a laptop under 60k and in terms of looks it does look and feel premium. The build is solid and I didn't notice any kind of flex. That's a great sign for a better build laptop. Anyway last year Mi Notebook doesn't have a logo but this year it has a Xiaomi label. Now at the back side there are two speaker grills, four rubber pads and air intakes both in back side and one in between keyboard and monitor area for better airflow. In the right side it has a USB 2.0 port then an 3.5mm audio jack and on other side it has a type C port which supports speed recharging, HDMI 1.4, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port and also a Thunderbolt 4 port. Yes, it has a Thunderbolt 4 port which is a great thing considering it is just a 60,000 rupee laptop. So the port selection of this laptop is quite good. Yeah, it has almost every port except that Ethernet port and SD card port. Anyway, the hinge is pretty robust and it doesn't wobble that easily. And yes, you can open this laptop with one finger. Anyway, as far as portability goes on, it's a very portable laptop. With all that aluminum build, it just weighs around 1.4 kg. The thickness is about 17.3 millimeter and the screen size is just 14 inch. So yes, it's a very portable laptop and you can carry it around without any difficulty and you will also won't find any difficulty placing your laptop in your lap and using it. So overall, in terms of build and design, Xiaomi has done a great job and you will notice that premiumness when holding this laptop. And yes, this is one of the best looking and a better built laptop compared to most other laptop under 60k segment. Display is one of the best feature of this laptop. Opening up the laptop, you are greeted with a 14 inch 2.5k Quad HD Plus display with 100% sRGB and it has an aspect ratio of 16 to 10. Now Xiaomi calls it as a true life display. Anyway, here the bezels are thin and last year Mi Notebook doesn't have a webcam but this year this laptop has a webcam and it's just a 720p webcam but the quality is pretty decent. Now 2K display fitted inside a 14 inch screen well that makes the text and images extremely sharper and higher the screen resolution means more content you can fit on a screen. Also, the color reproduction of this display is great as it has a 100% sRGB color gamut. So you can use this laptop for photo editing. But photo editors, you can also have a look at the new Asus Viewbook K15 OLED. It has a 100% DCI-P color gamut. And yes, it's more color accurate than this Mi laptop. So I think Vivo K15 might be a better option for photo editor. Now the next thing that I really liked about this laptop is that it's an anti-glare, anti-reflective display. So you don't see that weird reflection and also the viewing angles are good. So the combination of 2K display with 100% sRGB and an anti-glare display makes this display a killer for its price. So if you're a photo editor or if you just want to watch movies and TV shows, well for that this display is amazing. But as it is a 16 to 10 accept ratio, you will see black bars at top and bottom of your screen because most of the content in YouTube and Netflix etc are in 16 to 9 accept ratio. So yeah, you will see black bars at top and bottom of the screen but it doesn't concern me a lot because the display itself is absolutely beautiful. But what made me concerned is the brightness of the laptop. It's just 300 nits and don't get me wrong, 300 nits it's still good for indoor usage but when it comes to outdoor usage, 
you will wish that this laptop has a little more brightness. Anyway, for its price, this is one of the best displays that you can get in a laptop. Now, before moving to the next point, if you're liking this video, then guys, do like this video and also please subscribe. Anyway, let's talk about keyboard. Last year, Mi Notebook doesn't have any backlight, but this year, it does has a backlight. You can adjust it to two levels, which can be adjusted using F10 keys. Now, in terms of keyboard specs, the laptop has a scissor style keyboard with 1.3 millimeter key travel. But what about actual typing experience? Well, I really, really like typing in this laptop. The keys were very well separated. Key travel was good. And also the keyboard doesn't flex. So overall, it was a fun typing in this laptop. This year, Mi Notebook also has a dedicated macro key, which can also be useful for opening something like an app or image, etc. I've tried it to open Chrome and Explorer and some other apps, but you can customize it with the macro key software that comes with this laptop. You can also use this macro key to run any kind of script. I watched some of the other reviews of this laptop and reviewers says that this is one of the best keyboards that you can get in a laptop under 60k. Well, I don't know about that because I haven't tested other laptop under 60k, but I'm pretty much sure that you will enjoy typing in this laptop. Now, touchpad. Well, as you can see that it's a huge trackpad and it's quite responsive, but the problem while having a bigger trackpad is that while typing, a portion of your palm rests on the trackpad. So if your laptop doesn't have a good palm rejection, then your typing will suck because your laptop will take your palm as an input and it might change the cursor. So you might end up typing in a different line. But after typing in this laptop, I was quite impressed with the palm rejection. The laptop does have a good palm rejection, which is must if you are giving a huge trackpad. So the trackpad was good and as usual, it does support that Windows precision drivers. So all the gestures like three finger, two finger, four finger gestures works perfectly. Now one thing that I noticed is that the left and right click makes a weird clicky sound. And yeah, it does sound cheap. But anyway, overall the trackpad experience was good. Now let's move to speakers. This is one area where I think Xiaomi could have done a bit more work. This laptop has two 2 watt speakers in each side and it's down firing speakers. Anyway, the speaker quality is good, but the volume is a bit low. And yeah, it's not too low. You can still hear it. But this laptop speaker volume was almost same as my phone's speaker volume. Well, it's weird because it's a laptop. It should have a much louder speaker than my phone. Anyway, I wish this laptop has a bit more louder speaker. So in speaker section, I think Xiaomi needs to improve and provide a louder speaker at least for the next Mi Notebooks. Now let's talk about performance. The variant that I have is the base variant with Intel i5 11300H, 10 nanometer CPU with 4 core and 8 thread, which has max clock frequency of 4.4 GHz. Then Intel XC graphics, 8 GB DDR4 3200 MHz RAM, and a 512 GB PCLI and VMI SSD. Anyway, the performance is great and in normal usage, the laptop performs really well with that i5 H series processor and a faster NVMe SSD. Now, if you don't know what is this H series processor, well, H stands for high performance and it does performs higher than some other laptops with processor like i5 1135G7 processor and even close to Ryzen 5 5500U that you see in most laptops under 60K. Anyway, it handles multitasking quite well. Switching between apps and windows are seamless. Also, switching between Chrome tab doesn't make the page reload. But yes, sometimes for my usage, I feel that 8GB RAM is not enough. And yes, when I open a lot of apps or I start downloading a game and then use multiple apps, the laptop kind of stuck. Now, this is not because of the processor or the SSD it has. My unit has only 8GB RAM. And yeah, if you do a lot of multitasking, then 8GB RAM is not enough. But even that 8GB RAM was quite good at handling multitasking. But again, just go for 16GB RAM because the RAM is sorted and you can't upgrade the RAM in future. So just go to 16GB RAM. Now, in my case, this is not my laptop. It's my friend's laptop. And at the time when he bought this laptop, the i5 with 16GB RAM was not available. So he had no other options. And also he just uses his laptop for watching movies and just doing some normal task. So with 8GB RAM, he can still survive. But I still recommend you to go with 16GB RAM because you just need to add 3000 rupees. Just go with it because that's a better value. And also you can future proof your laptop. Now, what about high-end stuffs like video editing? Well, this H-series processor is 
good at 1080p video editing and photo editing so i tried davinci resolve for video editing and if you guys don't know this software is actually more gpu dependent than cpu so lack of a good dedicated gpu does make a difference but even though this iris xc graphic and this i5 h series processor was quite good in handling 1080p video editing playbacks were smooth even though placing three or four layers but when you place high transition or high effects are applied it does take some seconds so kind of a good laptop for 1080p video editing and i don't think this laptop can handle 4k editing smoothly anyway boot time initially was under 8 second but once i installed some apps and games the boot time just increased to 15 to 20 second now this happens but even though the performance was still same the laptop was very responsive the apps open quickly and and multitasking was also good now what i really liked about this laptop is its wake up time this laptop wake ups under one second and i even tested it keeping the laptop sleep overnight and the next day when i open this laptop it didn't lag and it woke up under a second now what about gaming well this is not a gaming laptop and it can't handle high-end triple a title because it doesn't have a good dedicated graphic card now the cpu is quite powerful at least for the price but the lack of good dedicated gpu does make this laptop not for high-end gaming but still you can do some casual gaming like i tried csgo and valorant in low graphic settings it was giving me around 50 to 60 fps but yeah it can't handle high-end games and also while gaming obviously this laptop get heated up now if you're looking for laptop mainly for gaming under 60k then go with a gaming laptop like lenovo ideapad 3 acer aspire 7 hp prevalent gaming laptops msi gf series and even that asus tough series now these laptops definitely will perform way better in gaming than this Mi Notebook Pro. So gamers obviously don't buy this and I know gamers will not buy this laptop. Anyway, overall a great performing laptop under 60k. With that 11th gen H series processor and a faster NVMe SSD, this is one of the best performing ultra books under 60k. But again, if you're doing some GPU intensity tasks like gaming or 3D modeling, like some engineering students do, then just go with a laptop with a dedicated graphic card, like a gaming laptop. In terms of battery life, Xiaomi claims that you will get 11 hours screen on time. But as you guys know, it varies on your usage. Now, in my case, I love casual browsing, watched a movie and did a little bit of gaming and a bit of video editing. And I was getting around six to seven hours of battery life. So battery life is quite good. For charging, it does come with a 65 watt type C power adapter and it does support USB power delivery chargers. So you can use any type C PD charger like your mobile phone type C charger. But for fast charging, you need at least 65 watt type C charger. And you can power this laptop through both type C and Thunderbolt port. Now in terms of connectivity, it does support Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. I don't have a Wi-Fi 6 router to test it, but this is what you get for connectivity. Before my final work date, these are the things that I really wish this laptop should have improved. A. I wish the laptop has a bit more louder speaker. B. An additional RAM slot. As the RAM is sorted, I really wish this laptop has at least one additional RAM slot so that you can upgrade your RAM in future. So should you buy this laptop? Well, I guess it depends upon what you are looking for. If you're looking for a nice thin and light all-rounder laptop around 60k which has premium build, portable and has an amazing keyboard and display but still powerful then this is a great option. In short, if you're looking for a powerful premium build thin and light laptop around 60k then definitely go with this laptop and you will be very satisfied. Now if you're looking for alternatives then these are some other options. So that was it for the review. If you like this video, then please like this video. And guys, do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified each time when I post my new videos. Now lastly, do share this video to your friends who are looking for a laptop. Anyway, if you have any question about this laptop, let me know in the comment section down below. And also let me know what you think about this laptop in the comments below. Well, that's it. It's Vigny signing off and I'll catch you guys in my next one.